Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let's go Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We worship you and we praise your holy name. Thank you most of all for Jesus Christ being Lord and Savior. That you gave us your only begotten Son. Those who believe in him shall not perish for everlasting life. So Lord, we thank you for our salvation, deliverance, and redemption all through Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray for our nation. You said in your word, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving thanks be made for all men. For kings and for all in authority. That we may lead a quiet, peaceful life, all God has done us. So we decree and declare, Lord, our nation's righteous nation, cleansed and covered by the blood of Jesus, that Jesus the Lord of the United States of America. Thank you, Lord. We're having a minor revival right now. We decree and declare in Jesus' name. People, every day, more people come to Jesus. And Lord, we pray for all the nation world, that every nation has a gospel preached as a witness, then it should come. We thank you, Lord, you raise up laborers to preach the gospel to every person. That each person has an opportunity to receive Jesus before they leave this earth. And Lord, we pray for all those missionaries out there that's preaching Jesus Christ, the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all their needs in abundance and protecting them, Lord. We give you all the praise and glory. We thank you, Lord, for the body of Christ is going forth in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, ruling and reigning in Christ. And Father God, I thank you for anointing me today that we will say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me out of the Holy Ghost. And I pray for all those doors. We hear your word. And here, Holy Ghost, will go forth and become doers of your word, led by Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. All right, let's open our Bibles over here to the book of Isaiah, please. We'll go here to Isaiah chapter 53 and read some uh, divine healing scriptures. Now, the scripture says here in Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5, Surely borne our griefs, that's also the word sickness, and carried our sorrows, pains, that is. Yet we did esteem and stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastised our peace upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now this is what Jesus did for us when he came to this earth. He was crucified, and the curse that was on mankind because of sin was placed upon Jesus. So not only Jesus took our sins and the punishment to sin, but he also took the curse that was on mankind that came through sin. And the Bible says in Galatians 3.13 that the Christ hath, that means has, redeemed us, the curse of law, being made a curse for us, written curse on the tree. So we need to always remind ourselves, I'm redeemed from that. When it comes to pain, sickness, disease, or anything else, our first line of defense is not accepted. Stand against it in Jesus' name. And having not all stand, stand therefore. You know, we need to always encourage yourself in God's word. To remind yourself that this is what the word of God says. You know, why we're over here in the Old Testament, let's go over here to Psalms, please, the 103rd Psalm. And notice what the psalmist said here. Of course, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all those in me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life's destruction, who crowneth thee love and kindness and tender mercy, who satisfy thy mouth good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Now, Psalm 107, the scripture says here in verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them their instructions. So we see this has always been God's plan for mankind to have good health, if they're sick, to receive healing. Now let's go back over here to the book of Matthew now. Matthew's going to refer to what we read there in Isaiah 53. In Matthew chapter 8, now verse 16, 17 says, When he was come, they brought on him, Jesus, many was possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick that it might fulfill what spoke, spoke by Isaiah the prophet, say himself, took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Now that, we want to key on that last part. That Jesus himself took our infirmities, not, not theirs, not just those people that are there during the, the Gospels, but our. See, that's great that, that God said that in there. Now he said here, that he's wounded for our transgression, he's bruised for our iniquities, the chastised our peace upon him, and with his stripes were healed in Isaiah. Then we have here in, in uh, Matthew eight seventeen. That he, uh, he took our infirmities and bare our sickness. Now let's jump over here to the first Peter, please. In first Peter chapter two. Now the Holy Spirit through Peter puts our healing in the past tense, because by this time Jesus already came, paid the price, died, was resurrected and dead, and alive today. Thank God for that. Amen. So the scripture says here in verse twenty four of um first Peter chapter two, who his own self bear our sins, his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins, should live unrighteous. By whose stripes you were healed. Now this puts our healing in the past tense, those last six words. And I like just linking up Matthew 8, 17 and 1 Peter 2, 24 and saying them together. Himself took my infirmities, bare my sickness, and by his stripes I am healed. That does away with, well, I'm going to get it healed someday. Because the enemy always try to convince you, well, you know, healing's passed away. It's not for us today. God doesn't always heal because look at sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so. Now they love the Lord. They were faithful. And here we go. 
and they did this and did that, and God never did heal them. Well, you know, it's the same kind of concept that people have that haven't received Jesus when you talk about being born again. They'll bring up people, well, what about so-and-so? Now, they're not born again. They do a lot of good works. And there was, you know, look what they've done, humanity. See, it goes back into works enter in. No, the, the, Jesus gave us grace. And by the, the grace of God, we receive everything. It's not because we work for it and or, earned it. See, this is why it's perplexing to many people because they think of someone who really loved the Lord, was a good person, God never did heal them. Well, that's the same thing. Many times the people that are not saved think about people that's not saved. When you talked about receiving Jesus, it's important that you receive the Lord, become born again, become saved. Well, what about those people? Now, they're good people. They'll bring up other religions, and what about them? Well, you know, everyone has to receive Jesus. The reason being is because Jesus is the only one who took our sins. No one else did that for us. And that Jesus came, we might have life, and then we're abundant. No one else did that for us. People did good things for us. Praise God for that. Maybe he gave their life to save people. But nevertheless, Jesus shed his blood to save the world. And that God only had one son. He gave his only begotten son. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man come to the Father but by me. Whosoever calls on the Lord shall be saved. If you confess me before men, I'll confess before my Father with seven. Now people want to often get into works. They think, well, now I believe the Bible and I believe in God and I go to church and I've done this and I've done that and I haven't done anything really bad. And you mean to tell me I still got to be saved or I'll go to hell? Well, Jesus said, go in all the world, preach the gospel of every creature. He that believes is baptized should be saved. We believe by receiving Jesus. Believe is action verb. So we receive Jesus by confessing him as our Lord. Now again, religious people don't like that. I didn't like it when I heard it. You know, I thought to myself, I mean, I, all these years I went to church, that wasn't enough. You still got to receive Jesus Lord. I mean, I believe Jesus Lord, but I hadn't received him as my Lord. I confessed him as my Lord. There wasn't, a, there wasn't a point I could, place I could look to that I'd personally received Jesus Christ. My Lord said, yeah, it aggravated me. But nevertheless, they gave me scripture and I didn't have any. No, the Bible teacher was saved by grace through faith, not of works, least a man shall boast. So we're saved by grace through faith, not ourselves, a gift of God, not of works, least any should, should boast. In Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. So we have to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. If we're going to be righteous. And being right standing with God. Not because of what we did or didn't do. And thank God for doing good things. But we become saved, born again by receiving Jesus Christ as Lord. Again, God only had one son. He gave his only son that he had so we could have eternal life. This was God's plan long before he created the world. This is God's plan that mankind would have Jesus. And he gave us Jesus Christ. Now when Jesus came he and was crucified, he took the curse or God placed the curse upon Jesus why he's being crucified. And Jesus bore all that so we could be free. And every person needs to receive Jesus. And then as they do, learn what Jesus did for this by learning promises. Reading these epistle letters like Ephesians and Colossians. That's going to tell us about who we are in Christ Jesus. And learn what Jesus did for us and receive it. And one thing he did, he took our sick and diseases. Now all of us can believe that because the Bible says so. And remember there in 3 John, verse 2, the scripture said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in hell. Is thy soul prosper? This is God's will for the church, for each one of his children. John 3, 16 is God's will for the whole world, that every person receives Jesus. And it's God's will that every believer be prosperous and have good health and have a sound mind. He did this for us. He wanted his children to live healthy and live prosperous, live victorious. Well, what about people that don't? Well, and again, what about people who haven't received the Lord? That doesn't change truth. As harsh as that may sound, we stay with God's promise of what Jesus did for us. Now, we read there in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, and Matthew 8, 17, and 1 Peter 2, 24, that not only Jesus took our sins, but he took our sick and diseases and pains and sorrows. And we need to focus on that, that Jesus made us right with God. And one way we can do that is first, read Scripture, promises that tell us what Jesus did, receive those promises, Change the way we thought, if we thought contrary to that. And then begin to act accordingly and thank God that we are what his word says we are. Father God, I thank you. Your word says, himself took my firmness, bear my sickness, by his stripes I'm healed. Father God, I thank you. Wish above all things that I prosper and be in hell. Father God, I thank you. And just let God know that we appreciate all that he did for us through Jesus Christ. And just begin to praise God and thank God for what the word of God says about us. Though we may not feel like it at the time, but it's just good that we always give gratitude, thanksgiving to God. You know, we read the other day in Philippians chapter 4 
Verse 6, the scripture said, be, uh, be careful of nothing, but everything by prayer and supplication with, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Now think about that. That accompanies that, our prayer that we have. We're to thank God that we believe we receive. Thanking God that, for who we are in Christ Jesus and thanking God for what we believe we receive by faith. That's what Caleb and Joshua sort of did when they were in, Je Caleb, excuse me, uh, Paul, well, we'll go back to Caleb and Joshua, but Paul and Silas, when they were in jail, now what did they do? The Bible said in Acts chapter 16, they prayed, and they'll have, they, sang, they sang hymns or praises unto God, and they got miraculously delivered. What did they do? They begin to praise God or sing praises unto God. Now the scripture teaches about, let a request be made known with thanksgiving. First of all, find out what God's word says about us. Now, for instance, healing, we can take those scriptures from Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, Matthew 8, 17, 1 Peter 2, 24, and build a foundation that we know from God's word. If we can believe that Jesus took our sins, we can also believe Jesus took our sick and diseases. And we have God's word. He gave us a covenant. Again, in the old covenant, you know, when it came to Joshua, or Caleb and Joshua, what did they do? Well, they believed what God had said and said, let's go up as once and possess the land for where we were well able in Numbers 13 and 14. Now, Caleb and, jo Caleb and Joshua believed what God said. They believed in their covenant. Now, what we want to do, we have a better covenant, set us on better promises. We want to believe our covenant. And first of all, find out what it says. Learn it. Learn what Jesus did and begin to receive. The engrafted word was able to change our mind or, or save our soul. It's going to do that, the word will, as we begin to gain knowledge of what Jesus did. So many of us that grew up in church, we didn't know that Jesus took our sick and diseases. I didn't. I didn't know Jesus became poor, life through his palm, he might be rich. But when you find out about it, now you can step out on those promises and begin to see yourself accordingly. Everybody's going to need to know about Jesus and receive him as Lord and Savior before they leave this earth. And every believer needs to know what Jesus did for them, that he bought and freely gave to us when he purchased that new covenant. And he gave us the heir, or heirship or the blessings that belong to Abraham. Think about this. And Abraham is very rich. And we have the same blessing upon us because it's in our new covenant. And we need to know that and acknowledge it and begin to praise God. And Father God, I thank you in Jesus' name that your word says. And begin to create and clear what his word says. I believe your word, Lord. Just like Mary said, when they, just before Jesus turned the water into wine, whatever he says to do, do it. Now think about this. And Jesus told those guys, go fill the pots to the brim. And they filled them to the brim. Go fill the pots, and they filled them to the brim, and brought them back. And Jesus said, now go pour the governor of the feast. Now think about this. You know, this, this is in John chapter 2. Well, now they did, and by doing so, the miracle was consummated. It had happened. What they do? They act upon what Jesus said. The nobleman, who had a sick son, in, in uh, John chapter 4, he acted upon what Jesus said because Jesus said, go home, thy son liveth. In other words, he's healed, he's delivered. And the man acted on the word of Jesus. He wanted Jesus to come to his house, and Jesus just told him, your son's healed, he's delivered. And so the man acted upon that. And by doing so, he got his miracle. You know, you think about the, the, the ten lepers there. In Luke chapter 17, Jesus said, go show yourself the priest. I think that was, you know, from Leviticus chapter 13, they were do that. Well, as they went, they were healed. And one of them saw that and came back and gave glory to God for his healing. And he was made whole. Now we can see here that acting on God's word is so important. And thanking God is so important. That's one way we can act on God's word. Is we believe, if we believe we receive our prayer answered or our faith decree, then what we can do? What can we do? We can thank God that we believe we have it in Jesus' name. And begin to give glory to God. This is what Abraham and Sarah did. They gave glory unto God. Now think about this. This baby doesn't come along until till Abraham's 99 years old. And Sarah's 91. I mean, they couldn't have kids years ago. And now, how did this miracle take place? One thing, they chose to believe what God said. And they began to call those things that be not as though they were. And not only that, but they gave glory unto God. And by doing so, they became fully persuaded that what God had promised, God was able to perform. Now, there's been times in my life I wasn't fully persuaded, maybe partially. Well, then what can I do? Go back to the Word of God, go back to those promises, and reread them to myself over and over again till I become more persuaded. And then begin to thank God, the according to the Word of God, I have it in Jesus' name, whatever it is, I have it in Jesus' name. I believe I received it in Jesus' name. 
See, that's one of the reasons why we should always be thankful and grateful. Let's, let our request be made known with thanksgiving. Now, it's easy to lose your thanksgiving, you know, by getting become more worldly conscious of what's going on in the world, the news, and everything else. Then you get depressed and angry and upset, you know. I don't know about you. I don't want to get into that stuff. But the point is, you know, what we want to do is stay grateful, stay thankful. And, of course, we can pray and intercede for others in the world and our nation everything, and we should. But we're going to be much more effective if we stay thank. In staying gratitude and giving thanksgiving to God, being grateful, for looking for our blessings and thanking God for them. Thanking God we're delivered and redeemed because the Word of God says. And just every day, read that 91st Psalm, pray it over your family, loved ones, your church, your ministry, your congregation, everyone that you're involved with. You can put their names there and begin to agree and declare that they're, they're protected. And we all should do that. You know, thank God we have the 91st Psalm that's in our covenant, divine protection. That God promised it, that we, we wouldn't even step our toe. Think about this. Is, this is miraculous. How does that keep from happening? Well, though he'll give his angels charge of keep us keep all our ways, lest thou dash your foot in a stone. So their help, the angels, the God's angels, are sent to help protect us. And the Bible says in Psalm 103, verse 20, angels hearken to the voice of the word of God. So not only when we speak God's word, the demons have to leave, like we read there in Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. That Jesus did, but not only that, but angels come and minister to us. Now, I may have never saw an angel, but nevertheless, they encamp around about us. And thank God for that. That's one of the ways that God protects us is by using angelic host. And again, they hearken, according to the Word of God, they hearken to the Word of God. They're God's messengers that help us in our life as we go through this life. And we need to just real, always remind ourselves. I've got divine protection. Father God, I thank in Jesus' name that your word says. And begin to decree and declare scripture like the 91st Psalm. You know, Jesus promised he'd never leave us nor forsake us. And we build our, our life on that. We begin to thank God and praise God that he promised he'd never leave us nor forsake us. So then he's with us. And begin to know from God's word that God said he'd never leave us. He's always with us. That he's perfecting and was concerned with us. And we can believe God that this, whatever we're involved in, turns around for our good by expecting God to do something. He promised he would. He said he'd meet all of our needs. Remember in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19? He said we can do all things through Christ in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. And that's how we need to talk and act. And know that, that the Bible says, let the weak say I'm strong. It makes all the difference in the world how we talk about ourselves. And of course, we speak God's word. There's nothing more powerful than God's word. And our body responds to the Word of God. Our life will respond to the Word of God and line up with the Word of God as we just hold fast to our profession of faith. And by decreeing and declaring who we are in Christ Jesus, that we're the righteous of God in Christ, that we're a new creature in Christ Jesus, that himself took my infirmities and bare my sickness, and by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. And Father God, I just want to praise you and I thank you, Lord, for that in the name of Jesus. And by boldly decreeing and declaring, this is what God's Word says. And I'm going to stand fast on it in the name of Jesus. And begin to praise God and thank God. According to the word of God, Lord, I believe I've got this. Whatever this is, you know. Maybe the money you're claiming or whatever. Father God, I prayed. I claimed it in Jesus' name. I believed I received it. And I want to thank you, Lord, for it in Jesus' name. And by doing so, we keep our faith active. See, well, how can I release my faith? Well, by speaking the problems and using God's word, the name of Jesus. Praying the prayer of faith. Believing I received whatever I'm believing in God for. That's another way to release our faith. And then what can I do? After that, well, I can continually thank God and praise God that I have what his word says I have. I prayed, I believed, I received it in Jesus' name. Father God, you said, therefore I send you what things are desire. When you pray, believe you receive me, you have them. I prayed, Lord, I believed, I received it in Jesus' name. And by giving praise to God and thanking God, that's how we keep ourselves active in faith. And it always reminds yourself, this is what God said he did for us. And what belongs to me? He says, I have the mind of Christ. Father God, I want to thank you. I have the mind of Christ. And then not say anything negative about your mind or about your life or about your body or about your finances. And we won't, if we keep praising God, we can say in that positive attitude that we believe receive, we believe we have what God's word says we have. Now, there'll be challenges. The enemy's always going to challenge people. But nevertheless, we've got the victory because Jesus got it for us. We're more than conquerors. And promises remind us of that. Hallelujah for those promises that were more than conquerors. In Romans chapter 8, verse 32, and in verse 37, think about this. 
All these promises that God, if God didn't withhold his son, he didn't. He won't withhold anything else in Romans 8, 32. And we're more than conquerors in Romans chapter 8, verse 37. The greater when it dwells, you and I, as believers in 1 John 4, 4. Yeah, that's what the Bible says about us. And that's what we need to create and declare. And just see ourselves ruling and reigning in this life as kings and priests. In Christ Jesus. And we're ambassadors. All that belongs to us because of what Jesus did. And that's who we are. That's how God sees us. And we need, you know, kings decree and declare. And that's what we do as believers. We decree and declare what should be done. I mean, you can talk about everything you hear on the news, or you can speak to it and begin to praise God and thank God that God's perfecting that what's concerned with you or us or your nation, whatever you believe in God for. And then hold fast to that. And, you know, not to engage in carnal conversations that's contrary to God's word. You'll be tempted to do that, you know, especially when people start talking about stuff, you know. You, you want to be able to say what you saw and what you know, you know. Now, just stay with the word. Begin to thank God. You, you've been speaking God's word. You, you prayed. You believe it's done. And then just continually thank God and just pass up those temptations you have to talk about what's going on in the world. You're not going to change that by talking about it, but you sure can change it by talking to it. Look what Jesus did when they woke him up and said the storm's on. He spoke to the wave, waves and the wind. And Joshua read there before, he spoke to the sun and moon and got to stand still. That's what we do as believers. And God needs us to go forth in this life using the name of Jesus, decreeing and declaring what the word of God says. I'm a righteous Christian. In Jesus, I'm the righteous of God in Christ. My nation is a righteous nation in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father God, for that. And boldly decree and declare. And the blood of Jesus we have applied to our life that's constantly cleansing us from all sins. It's things we're not even aware of we even did. His blood has always cleansed us in 1 John 1, verse 7. And we need to remind ourselves, I'm being cleansed and covered by the blood of Jesus. Not only wet, but Jesus gave us new life. And so the Spirit of God dwells inside of us. And we're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Because we're in Christ. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. And Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. And we take scriptures like that and remind ourselves, wait a minute. As Jesus is in, in this world, so am I. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. And the Bible says that we have world overcoming faith in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. This victory will overcome, our, will overcome the world even in our faith. We have world overcoming faith. The whatever we're faced with. Now promises, like we just quoted there, they remind us that this is what belongs to us. Because it's kind of easy to let those promises slip if we don't keep refreshed in God's word. We mean fresh. We'll always remind ourselves of it. And that's why it's important that every day we read promises in God's word. For like we just read those healing scriptures. Read Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, Matthew 8, 17, 1 Peter 2, 24, and constantly put ourselves in remembrance. This is what the Word of God says. And then we have the name of Jesus. Remember there in Philippians chapter 2, now the Bible says in verse 9 through verse 11, Wherefore God has highly exalted him, Jesus, and given him a name as above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, things in earth, and things in earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yeah, that's what God gave us. He gave us the name of Jesus. Then we can go forth in this life, and we should, ruling and reigning in the name of Jesus. Use the name of Jesus. Coming against situations that come against us. And say, no, I refuse that in Jesus' name. No weapon formed against me shall prosper in the name of Jesus. I condemn those words. I refuse that in Jesus' name. That's how we use what God gave us. We put in action. Like James said, be a doer of the word of God, not a hearer only. It's easy to come and hear a word, you know. A hear of the word. Amen. That's right. Praise God. Amen. You know. Well, how about putting it in action? That's something else, you know. But that's what we need to do as believers. And always remind yourselves, have I taken authority over this? Have I spoken of this? Have I prayed and believed I received? Well, if we haven't, then we need to do so. And then we've got, the, we did our part. Now what we can do is just stay fully persuaded. This is what God promised. He's going to take care of it. And knowing that he's going to work out this whole situation for me, how is he going to do it? I have no idea. Thank God I don't have to have an idea. All I have to do is just do what he said to do. His word doesn't return void. He said, when you pray, believe, receive, and you shall have them. Then he meant it. He told us to speak the problems, mountains. Then they'll be removed. Then that's what will happen. And we just act just like Mary said. Whatever he says to do, do it. And like an old man, he went on what Jesus said. All he had was what Jesus said. That was enough. Peter stepped out of the boat on the word come. Think about this. That's something he can remember the rest of his life, that he walked on water with Jesus. What did he do? He stepped out on the word. And we do that when we step out of faith. Most of us started doing that when we got born again, is that we started tithing. Remember that? 
you haven't started giving God our, t our first 10%. Thrilled to do it, you know? And so we started that way. And then we heard about walking in love and forgiving others. So, forgiving others. so we started, you know, doing our part about walking in love and, and forgiving other people. That's what's what James meant when he said, but be a do the word of God, not a hear only. You know, so you say, oh, I know I need to forgive them, but I don't know if I will or not. Nah, come on. We, we have to let go of it in Jesus' name. That's not easy on the flesh because it's not born again. But our spirit man has the love of God inside of us. So we can let go of those things that come against us. And there's always going to be stuff come, coming up. Just challenges, you know, to test your, your love walk. But no, we have the love of God dwelling inside of us. If God can forgive them, we can too. And we're to forgive the way God forgives, the Bible says in Ephesians 4. Hallelujah. Thank God we can. Why? Because he gave us his love to do it. Well, Jesus said there in Mark eleven twenty three. 23, well, verse 22, he said, have faith in God. Then he wanted to say, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever say in this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast thee, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which you say shall come to pass, he shall open say it. See, mountains are problems. The problem was in Mark chapter 4 was that storm that was raging against those disciples. When Jesus died, our ship was sleeping on a pillow. And Jesus arose after they woke him, and he spoke to the wind and waves, and they obeyed him. And then sort of scolded them because they didn't do this. No, see, God gave us authority over this earth. As believers, we go forth in Jesus' name, ruling and reigning in Christ Jesus. That's why we're told, whatever we bind on earth should be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth should be loose in heaven. Like one preacher said, binding don't work, uh, fix it, then loose it. <laughs> well, praise God. God gave us authority in Jesus' name. And it'll be situations arise that we realize, you know, I haven't even spoken to that. I need to speak to that and tell that to go in the name of Jesus. I refuse that in Jesus' name. And so we develop a habit in our life that when anything comes up, the first thing we do is resist it. We refuse it. We don't accept it. We stand against it. We bind it in Jesus' name. See, Ephesians said, have you known all stand, stand therefore. Now, how can we do that? Well, one way we could do that is by speaking God's word and holding fast to our profession of faith. Another way we could do that is to continually praise God and thank God that it's taken care of, that it's gone or whatever it is, that it's healed, it's delivered in the name of Jesus and decree and declare. Remember Colossians said, who hath delivered his power of darkness and has translated as king of Israel's son. And by just continually decree and declare, I had a friend of mine that was on cocaine for a long time and uh, he had a lot of money. There's no, you know, no, no problem financially to buy it. But uh, he heard a preacher read and preach a little bit about for, uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Who hath delivered the power of darkness and translates came as your son. And one day, that habit he had left him. Now, I, later on, I got to ask him, how did this all happen? You know? Well, he said, I, I took Colossians 1, 13. And every time I get ready to snort the coke, I begin to thank God I was delivered. And one day... The habit and everything left me. Thank God for this. So what did he do? Well, he found out about a scripture, said he was delivered, and started praising God according to your word, I am delivered. Praise God for that. Father God, I pray for each dear person that watched today. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all their needs in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, they're healed, they're delivered, and their eyes are standing by, enlightened about who they are in Christ Jesus. And for all of us, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord? Maybe you're not sure, or maybe you know you've never done it. Today's your day to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord. I want to read these scriptures from Romans that tells us how to receive Jesus. Then I'm going to ask you to pray a prayer with me to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord. Now here in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, verse uh, 10 and verse 13, the scripture says here, that if thou shalt confess to thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart that God has raised dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believeth righteous, and with the mouth confession made salvation. Verse 13 says, for whosoever call the name Lord shall be saved. So let's pray this prayer today and receive Jesus Christ as the Lord. Say these words and mean it, and you receive Jesus. God, I come to you today to receive, just say, to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord. I believe Jesus was crucified on a cross, took my sins, took my judgment of sin, died, was buried, and God, you're raised and dead in his life today. Jesus, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me and forgiving me of all my sins and saving me and keeping me from going to hell. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You prayed that prayer, congratulations. And then there's nothing more important you can ever do except receive Jesus Christ as the Lord. Now, if you did that, I'd like to hear from you. You can email me at jessridgeministries.com. And if you have prayer requests, you can also email that. And I'll stand with you and believe God for what's scriptural for your, in your life. Also, if you have prayer requests, you could call in tonight on church on the phone. 
take advantage of that. Maybe you haven't been on a while, or maybe you never have. Tonight be your night. That phone number and access code will be right here on our Facebook page. Take advantage of that. And we have communion, fellowship around the word. Praise God for it. Church on the phone. And I want to encourage you to start reading your New Testament. Start with the Gospel of John, if you just got saved. Find a church you go to that teaches Jesus the only way to heaven. Now, pastor, that church is going to help you grow and develop spiritually. Some places are not going, so they have something like this we can do, like what we're doing. Well, until next time, Brother Rich, I love you. I'm praying for you. Remember, Jesus is always more than enough.